So one question a lot of students ask me is how do I actually get better at solving problems that appear on the Putnam exam? The thing is, these problems seem kind of random and out of nowhere, so it seems kind of difficult to actually improve at problem solving in general. But there is a technique that actually helps, which is looking at past contests. And I don't mean contests that happen recently, but ones that happened well in the past. And today we're going to look at a particular example where looking at the Putnam 2006, we see a real relationship with the problem on the Putnam 2019. So stay tuned for this interesting geometry problem and how it relates to a really recent problem on the Putnam that has something to do with number theory instead of geometry. Hey, welcome to today's video, I'm Prof Omar. Today we're gonna to look at this problem, which asks, show that the curve x cubed plus three xy plus y cubed equals one, contains only one set of three distinct points ABC, which are vertices of an equilateral triangle. And the problem actually also asks to find the area of that triangle. So we're gonna do that in this problem. Okay, so this curve that we're given seems quite mysterious. It's governed by this equation that's cubic in the variables. We're going to subtract 1 and make that equal 0 and look at the left hand side and see what this curve really is all about. Now to do that, we're going to actually generalize the curve by homogenizing it in three variables. We're going to look at the expression on the left where we replace the any copy of negative 1 by a z. And look at the expression x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed minus 3xyz. Now that expression, again, evaluated at z equals negative 1, gives us the expression on the left for our particular curve. And it turns out this expression factors. And in fact, factoring this was effectively the key to a question on the Putnam 2019. The factorization has x plus y plus z as one factor, and then x squared plus y squared plus z squared, together with some other pieces. So what we need to do is balance this out. We have an x squared, x y squared, and we want to balance that out by subtracting and xy squared. We have a y, so to do that we can subtract x squared. Subtracting x squared will balance with multiplying, or subtracting xy, sorry. Subtracting xy, multiply by the y, we get a x minus xy squared. Now by symmetry we can do the same by subtracting xz and subtracting yz. So we get this fully factored form, it turns out. x plus y plus z is one factor, and now we're going to multiply the second factor by 2. And the reason to do that is it's going to allow us to take that second expression and actually write it as a sum of squares, which is going to be very helpful for us. Okay, so we've done the multiplying here by 2. And again, this is something that we inherit from the Putnam 2019. Okay, um, if we look at one piece, we'll extract the x squared and the y squared from it. And then the negative 2xy together with that will give us this perfect square trinomial, x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. Let's remember to take the half out because we multiplied by 2. All right, um, so now this x squared minus 2xy plus y squared factors into the quantity x minus y all squared. And by symmetry, we can do the same thing with xz and with yz. So we get a half times the quantity x plus y plus z multiplied by x minus y all squared plus x minus z all squared plus y minus z all squared. Okay, great. So now let's actually use this with the expression that we had when we plugged in z equals negative one, which gives us exactly the curve that we wanted to see what our curve actually is. Okay, so if we do that, we'll get x plus y minus 1 as one of the factors, and then the other factor will be the quantity x minus y all squared plus the quantity x plus 1 squared plus the quantity y plus 1 squared. And this is the expression here. We'll have it multiplied by a half, but we're setting this to 0. Um, so now, because we have this product of factors, we either have one of these big factors is 0 or the other is 0. And the other being 0 and it being a sum of squares helps a lot. So we get either x plus y is 1 or all of these factors are 0. So x would equal y and x would equal negative 1 and y would equal negative 1. 
So this curve consists of two pieces, the line x plus y equals 1, and the point negative 1, negative 1. So the graph of this thing is actually much simpler than we might have expected to begin with. Let's actually plot this graph. So we get the point negative 1, negative 1, and then we also have this line x plus y equals 1. Now as we begin to draw the line, we go back to this question, and now makes sense that there's only one set of points that form an equilateral triangle. We can't have all three points be on the line because they'd be collinear, so it'd have to involve this point negative one, negative one, and two other points on the line. Now let's drop a perpendicular from the point negative one, negative one to the line itself. That line that the perpendicular lies on will have a slope of positive one, so it'll intersect the line at the point half half. Now we can draw what the rest of the equilateral triangle will look like, but the key here is if we let h be the length of that altitude we just drew, we can compute h and then that'll actually help us find the area. So the h is twice the quantity negative one minus half all squared, which is the square root of uh, the square root of that, which is the square root of two times nine over four, and then that simplifies to three over root two. So the area, which is the, really the question that we ended off with, we haven't wrote it here, but that's the question on the actual problem, can actually be expressed in terms of the height. If you have a, the height of a equilateral triangle, the area is the square root of three times h squared all over three. And so we get a height of root three times nine halves in this case over three, and that simplifies to the answer that we want, which is three times root three all over two. So a great question that really gives us that lesson of looking at past contests to get an idea of how to learn to approach problems in the future.